So I'll work all day and I'll come home and then I'll eat dinner and I'll make pots until I go to bed sometimes. Uh, well, aside from the way it's made, you know, being that we heat with wood rather than electricity or gas, which we normally do, uh, it imparts a natural, warm look about pots. So uh, this is a kiln, the wood fire kiln that I designed and built myself with some some help from some friends that are in the know. And uh, first one I've ever built, and I've only fired one, so made some mistakes along the way. But basically, the idea is. With a pot, you want to heat it up to a certain temperature, and it causes some physical changes in the clay. Uh, I get a small fire going at first. You want to warm up pots slowly. You can imagine that if you heat them up all at once, things start to explode. Uh, which don't ask me how I know that, but but I know that it's happened. Uh, anyways, after the fire gets going to a, a certain point, it'll actually be reaching into the chamber here where the pots will be. And at high fire, when we're near the end, the fire goes all the way through the chamber, sort of picture a stream of fire with the pots in it, uh, all the way through there, all the way up our 15 foot chimney, and it'll blow about three feet out the top of it. And the idea with wood firing is it can take several hours, and uh, I will burn something like two quart of wood. So it's, I could do it with less wood, but the more wood that I put through, the more ash will go into the chamber, and all that ash ends up melting onto the pots. So it gets so hot that ash that's sort of flowing along in this river of fire when it hits a pot sticks to it and it'll actually become a glaze. When, when somebody picks up a pot that, that's wood fired you can sort of see the story of how it was made. You can see shadows of other pots and you can see which direction the fire was coming from and, and, and all sorts of things like that. So it really adds a dimension that you won't see in, in uh, other pots that don't have what we call atmosphere. I started in high school and uh, we had a really good art program where I grew up in Burlington, Mass. And uh, I started there and the teacher was really good and, and she was interesting and of course they had wood-fired pottery was way outside the scope of what I ever would have thought. But uh, I got into it, I, I like the fact that it's three-dimensional. I like art in general, but the fact that it's three-dimensional uh, was really interesting to me and also the fact that it's functional. In Japan, it's uh, they don't make a distinction between functional art and art that hangs in a wall. So you might see a, a bowl that may command you know, tens of thousands of dollars and price, $50,000 for this bowl. And the fact that you can use it makes it no less a piece of art. And so that sort of aspect of it to me that, that you could make what some people consider high art but still have it be functional, be useful, not just be something you look at was kind of fascinating. When I lost my job, I thought, well, oh, I guess I got stuff to sell. I guess I'm a professional now. Um, you know, nobody's getting rich, or a few people are getting rich on pottery, especially when they start out, that's for sure. And so I, I had a good paying job, and uh, losing that, it was, it was tough to sort of go into an art and try to make money doing an art. But. So uh, that's the name of name of my little company. We uh, live on Wiley Hill Road here. Uh, I do a number of fairs. There's uh, some big ones that I do and some small ones. One of the ones that we like to do is uh, Concord Arts Market. So downtown Concord, they have on Saturdays they they'll have this uh, in spring right through the fall. It's really a community thing. Uh, you know, you get to know the other artists, and that's that's really neat to us. That's a big part of it. You know, a lot of those small fairs make you, you know you make a few hundred bucks in an afternoon and when you consider the time of production as well you, you're making a terrible hourly wage but uh, we really like the other artists it's a big community type thing yeah now it's now that I have a, a job again now that I have a full-time job again I, I just can't stop doing it this is hopefully hopefully will be my early retirement will be paid for as being a poor potter uh, right now for me, the fact that I have a full-time job, although it makes it more difficult to have a sort of successful, you know, monetarily successful business, um, it also means that I don't have to worry about my bills as much. 
I can collect all the tools and toys that I need. I can explore my medium. And um, so I, I, I think that if you want to be super successful, you have to jump in with both feet. I, I have to be honest and say I don't have enough experience yet to, to be handing out advice and telling people how to, be, how to be successful with it. But I'm enjoying the hell out of what I do. So uh, that's what's important to me. If you want to enjoy the hell out of what you do as well, <laughs> then uh, maybe I have something to say on that.